Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 123. This episode of the Self-Publishing Podcast is brought to you by 99designs, the online marketplace that helps you get outstanding book cover designs at an affordable price. Start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP and enjoy a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, three guys who sometimes shower together. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that's all about how to get your words out into the world without contending with agents, publishers, or the other gatekeepers in traditional publishing. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and my co-hosts are the... Well, Sean Platt and the slightly ill David Wright, and uh, we're doing a time warp thing today. Still un- unsure exactly how this is going to work out and when you guys will see us. Ooh, greetings from the past. <laughs> Dave, was, uh, we were talking last night, and it was possible we were going to reschedule this one, and um, and uh, and but Garrett is our, our guest today, and Dave said, oh, I won't even have to talk. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah, uh, between you and Garrett, th- 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 there shouldn't be much need for my. Yeah, voice. I think we're. I think we're good. <laughs> Dave could just grunt. You can just go to sleep. You should do like um, get the the glasses that are like eyes. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you just sit there while you actually sleep behind them. Yeah, or, or maybe I'll just read Dream Engine. Oh, are you uh, making it your way through Dream Engine? Uh, I am up to chapter four, I think. So. <laughs> slowly making progress. All right. Well, I have good. not. This has been a hellish week uh, trying to finish up Yesterday's Gone, uh, the the last episode of the season five. Ah, uh, the fucking nightmare, man. Because <laughs> I've been sick, my wife has been sick, so it's it like nothing is going right, and my son, uh, you know, having to take care of him. It's just nothing is working. We've had some choice ranty emails. <laughs> yes, I have sent some emails. Not for public, unless they somehow get leaked. <laughs> no, no. That, that we'll, I don't throw my email on iCloud. Yeah, <laughs> we'll don't, don't, we'll don't bury it. it. <laughs> so we're going to have Garrett Robinson on today. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Don't tune out. I swear it's a good thing. Um, we're going to talk about he's doing a Nuts and Bolts video series for us, for our He's channel. Show us his nuts. He's going to show us his nuts. And taint. Better than his bolt. <laughs> it's all the stuff that we, as Sean said, didn't want to touch and write, publish, repeat with a 10-foot pole just because it was so granular. It was like, how do you set your categories on Amazon? I'm sure it's more interesting than that. Do you remember any of the topics? <laughs> yeah, it's it's basic stuff. A lot of, a lot of Scrivener stuff, just a lot of, a lot of how-tos. Um, you can see the whole... Um, I, I'm pretty sure you're invited to the folder. There's a um, there's a nuts and bolts folder, and there's a Scrivener file in there. And I mean, Garrett's been pretty fastidious about it. There's a whole outline in there with little docs for each um, video, um, and it, it's really really cool. Like this is a huge huge asset to the uh, to the the self publishing community. I'm really really excited about it. Um, okay, uh, j- just. We we got five people watching live, but the video says please stand by still. Is it because it's and comments are disabled? So, uh, yeah, probably. Um, and it, I sent out a link on Twitter. So yeah. did I just tell people to watch nothing? Yeah, well, <laughs> we weren't. But well, I, I I commend your sending it out on Twitter. But the way that we set this up was originally supposed to be private, and so that's probably fucking it up because. Okay, nobody cares about this. I know that nobody cares, but now that you've asked, I, I will explain it. Um, this was originally... Yay! We aren't going to be able to do one of the Summit, which is our um, our event in Austin that will be, as I record this, next uh, Friday. So we aren't going to be able to do that. And I... Yeah, it does show as unlisted. Um, that's probably the problem. Um, and so we were ju- we were going to record these out of order. We were going to record at our normal time on Friday, and then flip flop them. So the one we record on Friday would be 123, and this would be 124 to air after. And it shows as public in YouTube. So I thought, well, it'd probably go out on YouTube. And Jacob had set it up as private so that we could do them in order like that. And I think the fact that we switched it up in the middle and it's just it's a mess. So. Uh, I, there's nothing I can do. I, I I don't think unless we send out like the actual YouTube link. But isn't you're saying people can that, see that, it? That's not showing. 
So maybe if we make the the video, there's not. I can't change it while we're live. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, let me tell everyone on Twitter. Never mind. Never mind. You guys are gonna have to wait. Jacob will release it Friday. And see, now we're gonna be all fucked up because now neither release of them the will be live. Like this one won't be live until the time when we're actually recording the one. That's why. That's why we should have just left it alone, Sean. We should have just left it alone, motherfucker. He convinced us to change it. Okay. So anyway, back to self-publishing stuff. Sorry for those of you who are attempting to be live. That's just uh, nothing we can do, guys. Sorry. Um, but our <clears throat> I don't I don't know what to say in news before Garrett comes up. I feel like there's a ton of stuff going on that we're going to be able to talk about soon. Our, our um, membership model is rolling along nicely. I will I will say that. Oh, that's um, so beautiful, and and I, a big, big high five to Johnny too, because <laughs> on Sunday I think it was, he sent me an email. Actually, no, it wasn't an email. We don't do email anymore. It was Slack, <laughs> and he said, um, "Yo, bitch, are you gonna send an email reminding people that it's gonna go up from 4.95 to 5.95?" And I said, "I don't want to send an email," <laughs> and he said, "I'll do it." And um and he did and it it went really well and that was awesome he was totally right um and can I uh, just interrupt briefly on on that for a second because I I was real tentative on that email thing because if you remember I've been asking you about it a lot like yeah. are are we doing emails are is our list gonna go stale like we haven't been communicating with anybody are we gonna let anybody know about this deal that we have because just for your reference guys as much as we tell you to build lists our lists don't know about this whole Sterling and Stone <laughs> Beauty. They didn't know. They've never received an email. And so we've been relying on people to go to the blog. And so I, knowing how much is on Sean's plate, I've tried to be kind of quiet about it. Like, it should, we should be sending emails, right? But I don't want to confuse the works because there's too much shit going on. And um, we need to do that. So I'm 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 glad that we pushed on that, but I think that that's a lesson learned for everybody. You can't just expect your list to figure stuff out. They don't know. They can't read your mind. You know, and and for me, they aren't going to your site every day. Yeah, I don't want to do anything if I can't do it well. And I wasn't in the headspace to write an email, even a short email. If it's if it's an email that goes into Aweber, it takes a very specific headspace. It's different than other kinds of writing. It's it's. It's a little more mathematical, um, and I just I wasn't in the place to do it, and Johnny was, and that's awesome, so awesome, and that went really well. And the the site the the site's been kind of breaking down on us a little bit um, the last couple of weeks. Uh, download links aren't working. Just it's the kind of stuff that we hate because we just want to go make stuff. <laughs> like we the just kind of stuff, stuff that happens with every launch with everybody. Yes, it's I don't just, know why you think you're special. Because I don't know, but but we we um I, awesome to a uh, big shout out to Chris Garrett because we've been on with him in the last couple of days and it looks like everything's getting ironed out very very quickly now um, and we can go you know whole hog on the uh, on the uh, the members page and get everything both attractive and working which is our our goals oh and really cool today I finally finally cut the first uh finished the first uh. How we use Scrivener for Beats videos, and yeah, 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 it, it's, time. yeah it's it, it, this is the number one email that I'm getting right now is where the hell are my how do you Scrivener for Beats video series, and um, it's just taken a long time to 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 get off the ground because a we needed to finish Axis. So originally, um, you know, Axis was Axis basically got delayed right in front of uh, the Dream Engine because it seemed like it was going to be too big and we didn't want to rush it and then have to stop before starting the Dream Engine. And so um, we didn't start it until after the Dream Engine was done and it's 141,000 words in rough draft. Good God. So it's a long, and it's standalone. And so because well, I did it's... want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's standalone, you know, we can't rely on our normal, you know, serial shenanigans like we have to make sure all the boxes are closed and all of that um, so it was you know it's a, it's a big project it's a very in fact we were talking about it just I don't know if it was yesterday or today but it's the most expensive project we'll have done so far um, as far as time and um, I feel and it's totally worth it not it's in totally money worth it. but yeah. in yeah. other stuff I agree like it's it's very creatively rewarding it's an awesome 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 book um, I think we're very very proud of it 
um, all the way from the very first seed of the idea for this book. I think it's something we're very proud of, and um, and it's it's really fun to see it almost you know done fully articulated. But um, we couldn't start the Scrivener Beat series until it was done because without the contrast of what it was like before the story was finished, being able to contrast those ideas with the finished project, I feel like we would have been shortchanging the video series. So we had to finish, and that only happened a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't just start on day one. Like, I had to clear my plate before I could start on the video. And then once I started on the videos, they were really hard. <laughs> like, they're really, really hard, because I decided I did, uh, that just a plain screencast would be kind of boring, and that people would want a little more face interaction. And so I wanted to do it, you know, dual, where sometimes you could see the Scrivener file I'm talking about, but... You know, if I'm talking about something, you're not just looking at the file. And I just, I get really self-conscious. I all of a sudden hate my voice and I, I hate my face and I start making mistakes. And it's just taken a really long time to get the first one done. But I figured out a couple of, uh, you know, anything like this, when you're learning something new, you just kind of have to really dig into the first one. And so the first one took many, many hours. But um, I feel like I have good flow now, and I think, you know, I'll be under an hour on all the rest of them, and I hope to have the entire series wrapped by Friday, and, um, and that'll does be really, really awesome. Does wrapped mean ready for viewing, or does wrapped mean ready for, like, post-production or something? Ready for post-production. Um, Garrett, you know, we'll talk to him in a, a few minutes, but he'll, he'll be putting... Um, I actually am really happy with this, because originally I was just going to leave a bunch of my mistakes in, and he was going to edit them out. But I thought that was kind of crappy. Like, here, please clean up my mess. You know, um, so the one that I gave him now, it really just needs a little bit of polish. You know, a, an intro and an outro. And I think the the actual stuff, the, the it's nine minutes, <laughs> hours and hours and hours for nine minutes. But the nine minute video as is, um, I'm perfectly fine. It doesn't need anything within the body of the actual video. It is the um video rife with spoilers for access? Um, no, not so far, because it's just kind of an introduction video that talks about what we're going to talk about in the series um, and explains what beats are and you know gives a little overview of Scrivener. But it's in our completed access one, the one I copied today. And right. so you can see in the left-hand sidebar, you see the, the development diary, you see all the, the, the beats <clears throat> from the synopsis, the research, and I kind of explain a little bit about you know how that works for us and specifically how you know Scrivener uses. Um, and there's a couple of chapters that are open while I'm talking. But no, it's, it's, there's not that many spoilers. But yes, there will be. I don't know how I could possibly make this series without ruining Axis. Like, I'll try my very best, but... I don't, I don't see how, how you to need to have twists and turns in the plot. Maybe I'm not understanding what they are. But isn't the idea... It's not how do you write Axis. It's how do you use Scrivener to plan and execute a novel. Right, but... But I can't talk in a vacuum. I need to use specific examples, right? So if I'm talking about the beats and I'm saying, well, this is because there's there's the comments that we leave to each other. There's the things that, well, based on a uh, based on our story structure, we need this turn here. We're trying to communicate this to the reader because the whole idea of beats, it's not just a, an outline of what happens. It's the whole pre-production. It's setting mood. It's what are we trying to accomplish before we start writing. Like, those are all questions that we want to answer. And, you know, access by nature of what it is, it's, you know. Mm. But hopefully it drives interest in the story. Yeah, I'm kind of, it makes me a little sad because there, this book is so tricky. And, and the development diaries, I'm worried, spoil it. And this video series, which isn't even for people who have read it, um, <laughs> are going to spoil it. And that, that bothers me. But Yeah, I'll, I'll do my very, very best to um, to talk around it. But, you know, until I dig in, I don't even know. Well, it I, needs I, to serve this series. It does. I voiced, I voiced that same concern about Dream Engine, and your people still read that, right? The people that were in Fiction um, in Box. Yeah, I guess that's true. But the, the spoilers in that are a different type of spoiler. Like yeah, it's yeah, a concept I, I, spoiler. Yeah, I am interested in, in this book, X's, uh, because... I know generally what it's about, and I've avoided all of your talk of spoilers so far. Uh, I, I am interested, and I don't want it spoiled. So. Well, Dave, unless I'm mistaken, and I don't want to talk this out, I think you do know the biggest spoiler. No, 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 because he does I, I tuned it yeah. out, and I forgot. Yeah. I have an amazing ability to forget things. He does. <laughs> if I mean, if we were talking about a nip slip, like that would have been... 
I mean, that shit's in concrete. It was yours. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but no. Um, and, and, and yeah, I'll do, my, I'll do my very best. I don't want to spoil anything, but I also don't want to um, shortchange. No, 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 of course, of course. The, the, the people need to get what they're, what, what they're entitled to. I just, I hope it can be done without spoiling. Yeah, me but, too. But also, yeah. I mean, for me, like, if I was watching this series, it would probably drive my interest in the book further because I'd want to deconstruct. Like I'd want to. I'd want to see what you know they were talking about. So I'm more maybe. excited about this book than I have for anything in a while. The buildup on it has been intense, and I'm polishing it now, and it's fun. It's cool. Can yeah, you just the, tell those people, hey, read the book first, or the book won't be. Nobody's going to do that. After. Yeah, but well, it's, it's it, will we be can strongly it. suggest it, but it's yeah. you know it's this thick, so that's oh, a tall. that bothers me too. The, the videos are going to be out before the book. Uh, yeah. Oh, that bothers me even more. But maybe <laughs> maybe it can be done the right way. I'd hate I hate to have spoilers before the book even fucking exists. Can can you can you section off part of the video that has like the biggest spoiler, or is it just? Can you like have hit push a button a fast forward to jump past the main spoiler or no? I don't know. I think I'll have to just be very conscious um, uh, about what I'm saying. But Maybe I, you should I'll... just write another book and do another series of videos. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Let's just write another book next week. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I could have done um, the floor would have been cool to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, that actually might have might have been a good one, except for. Uh, I, well, I'm, hey, do a short story. Well, well no, we've already, because, no, no, we've already committed to doing this. We can't not do it now. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and I feel like these were like Le this Fleur, is a like, promise we got to deliver. On. Yeah, now they're now they're ramping up, right? So uh, Le Fleur is already when access were done, they were kind of Johnny and I were were referring to them as Beats 2.0. Right, like this is this is a full evolution of what we've done for a year, <clears throat> and now this is this is a fully fleshed out articulation. Yeah, I mean, just it. to give you an idea, I had um I had an hour and a half or so yesterday, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna dig into the to the Lafleur beats um before I go off to a barbecue, and um I didn't get to the actual beats. Like I had an hour <laughs> and a half, and I all I got through was like um you know story arc and synopsis and uh, characters and locations. I I didn't get to the meat of the story. I didn't get to what actually occurs chapter by chapter. So that's an hour and a half, you know. Yeah, and these it's are, these are real big. So I'd say Lafleur is two point one. Like that's the thing we want to get better with every project because if if we're not, then something's wrong, right? We suck. We need to grow, and um and Lafleur, I think there's probably I mean in addition to all the the locations and all of that, there's about twenty thousand words worth of beats for what will essentially be a ninety to a thousand a hundred thousand word story. So the percentage is way way higher than what we used to do. But um, it's for an entire series. But it is, yeah, it's for an entire series. So th this was more world building, where Axis wasn't like that. Axis is a standalone. Axis begins and ends, and um, there's one narrative arc, and those we'll never see those characters again. Um, something is really wrong with us if we write a sequel to this book. Like it's not that kind of book. Um, so so th they're almost uh, they were fleshed out in the way that Lafleur is, but with a finer point. Left floor, we expect many books in this series, so the characters, you know, they, they needed to last longer. The locations needed to last longer. the The main location of the story, which is a, a flower shop called Left Floor, is um, you know, it needed to have texture and personality, and we needed to spend time doing that. Okay, so which of Garrett's? I'm not shitting you. There are like twelve in here. <laughs> he has Do more you think I'm supposed to me. invite? He does. I, I, there's and I'm, I'm and I thought well, maybe there's a lot of people named Garrett Robinson. Well, there's clearly a few people who aren't the Garrett we know. But he's got there are at least four in here that are all Garrett. Is it the one where he's looking a little suspicious? Where he's kind of like, is it that one where he's yeah. kind of making that face? All right, let's try inviting him. Um, Dave uh, uh, specifically requested when Sean was setting up with Garrett that he not uh, step on our ad read. So this should be. Interesting to see if when we get going. I mean, no, I have no idea what we're going to do in 15 minutes after Garrett's on. <laughs> um, yeah. So, how about Just that talk, local sports team? Talk about the talk about the, the Sterling and Stoner stuff and how it's paving the way and blah 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 blah. Um, membership programs for authors. We're we're making it work. Yeah. Well, I'm actually really really happy with all of that because um, it, it it's not it's 
it's not revenue that I care about there. It's it's true fan. You know, it's it's that tally of like we're trying to build our audience and trying to build our tribe. And I really, really love that there are people who believe in us enough to say, yeah, I'll, I'll sign up for that. That's that's a really, really good feeling. Um, having said that, um, uh, I really wish that the site hadn't broken down. <laughs> <laughs> Because Place like your trust in us. Well, that's exactly it, Dave. Like one of that's what we're really we're selling. We're selling trust in us. And you know, um, uh, Garrett says he doesn't see anything. Oh, good. Oh, that's that Google bullshit where I have to email him the link. <clears throat> All right. So I guess new protocol, uh, Jacob will be. To, we need to email people the 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 links. Uh, of course, they're going to join ahead of time then. All right, so keep going on, Sean. If only we had something else to talk about for, like, a couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sean, continue. Um, well, do we need any logo work done while, <laughs> while we're waiting for Garrett? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> no, no, I is guess this, not. Is this turning into the worst show ever, or is it my imagination? <laughs> Garrett. Garrett! <laughs> it's Garrett's fault. It is Garrett's fault. I'm yeah, trying to find my Gmail window in there. Garrett's nuts and bolts series. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, wait, uh, wait, wait, Garrett is now a manager of Sterling and Stone Google Plus page? What the fuck is going on here? It, go ahead, Garrett, Sean. Garrett wants to know if you can email him. Go, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm handling it. I'm just thinking of people <laughs> clawing their eyes out listening to this. So please continue with something relevant. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, yesterday's gone. Yeah, that's... yeah. Yesterday's gone. You want to talk about the end? The uh, yeah. Let's give away the ending. <laughs> no, no, no. The difficulty of writing the ending. Well, I guess um, it's not really. It's not really story that's giving you trouble. It's life, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's finding time to. But but I will say that I mean, it, the the writing this. I mean, writing writing any book in the series of our most successful series is always intimidating. And you want to get it right, and I, I do spend more time writing and rewriting stuff than uh, probably normal. I mean, although I tend to do that all the time, I suppose. Yeah, but it makes sense on. I mean, really, because what what this book is is really setting the stage for what is the final season, right? So yes. when we hit when we hit season six next year, that's it. Like we're saying goodbye to yesterday's gone, and there's just a lot of um, stage setting that we're doing right now because. It is awesome. It's also tricky to determine who to kill off now, and you, need pe you actually need people for the next season. So yeah, but if you're under 18, you don't really have much of a chance. <laughs> it's just that is not true. <laughs> the deaths have been primarily adults in this series. Yeah, but they really have the cards stacked against them. Dave has to has to fight. I'm like, really another another kid. You guys, I wish that we had it on video. Dave's purest moment of glee this season was, I don't even think we ended up doing this one thing that we're talking about doing, but just the idea of doing it just made him all like, he was rosy as Santa Claus. Like, <laughs> he was he was shaking like a bowl full of jelly. It, because it's so unexpected, but it also fits so well with everything we've done prior in the story, uh, it just snapped into place perfectly, but it also seemed surprising. So that that's why I was excited. It wasn't just putting somebody in danger. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Let's talk about book covers for a minute. Book covers? <laughs> what a novel concept. Spontaneously, I, I know that a few listeners out there are just itching to get their first book out the door. And despite what you may have heard, people do judge a book by its cover. Now, when you were talking about Yesterday's Gone, I was like, I need to interject on this. <laughs> Yes, people do judge book uh, by by its cover. I can't tell you how many emails we get a week from people telling us how how we help them inspire them to finish their first book, and and, and that's Just an like awesome. Tony Robbins. Yes, that's an awesome thing, by the way. Uh, you see these writer, uh, writers pouring their heart and soul into their first work, and they're finally done. But then some of them make a very big mistake. They attempt to do the cover themselves. And no, they holy just, shit! Don't do yeah. that. <laughs> And let me just say, most people should not attempt to do their own covers. The competition is stiffer than ever, and bad book covers will not cut it anymore. Well, what if you don't know a designer, Dave? You're you're pretty much screwed then, right? 
No, no, you're not screwed. Because, oh, my God. Because with 99 Designs, you have access to tons of designers all competing. It's like the Hunger Games in there to make you a great-looking professional book cover at a price you can afford. And you can have your awesome new book cover in about a week. We use 99 Designs for several beautiful book covers like the Dark Crossings collection, Syllable Soup, and our latest uh, Collective Inkwell book, Threshold. We also use 99 Designs for our shiny new Unicorny Sterling and Stone logo. Uh, whether you need a book cover, a logo, web design, T-shirts, car wraps, banner ads, pretty much anything you no, can. I want to get a car wrap. Yes, I do too. What is Let's a car wrap? Let's get a the car wrap. The designers at Ninety Nine Designs. Sterling and Stone. <laughs> the designers at Ninety Nine Designs have you covered. I highly recommend Ninety Nine Designs. And well, and the only problem is that if you do that, you're gonna lose everything if you don't like any of this. <laughs> no, and the best part is. With 99 Designs, they offer a 100% money-back guarantee. So oh, you you're have, full of shit. No, I swear. They, you've got nothing to lose. Wow. Let's say I had um, a child in my basement, and I wanted to take them out without Are you looking, anybody you wondering seeing. if you have something to lose with that child? That child escapes? <laughs> no, well, no, no, no. Something's already or happened the child to the child. Something to lose. Right, no, I need to, I need to get them out of the house. Well, yeah. well, let's cut to the chase. Would they design a body bag for me? <laughs> if you could get a wrap on it, you know, like you could get a logo to wrap around it. Yes, like it could say "No child in here." Like a collective inkwell body bag for your loved yes. ones. Would they design a collective inkwell body bag? We no. could find out. And it could have a slogan on it that says "Teen No Better." <laughs> Start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP and enjoy a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. A power pack upgrade. It's like Superman power pack. Makes your design no one stand out from the crowd. 99designs will bold your listing, highlight it with a prominent background, and feature it before regular pissant listings out there. This is on average results in 185% more designs. Visit 99designs.com slash SPP and get started. Are you Garrett, saying that people who don't use the Power Pack upgrade are suckers? I think that if you don't use 99designs.com slash SPP and get that free Power Pack upgrade, then you pretty much, yeah. I mean, you shouldn't you, even be writing, right? You, you, you shouldn't. You're incompetent if that occurs. You're like a celebrity who takes nude photos. You deserve whatever happens to you. Garrett, save us from ourselves <laughs> at this point. Although, maybe... You've started off on the wrong path if you're going to try and I definitely have. I almost so, told Sean when I first popped in because you were talking about covers. I didn't put together that it was the ad read, and I uh, I almost jumped in with like an actual thing to say, which of course oh, no, exactly that would ruined it. Uh, but I didn't. But you should have seen. Well, maybe you did see our our stumbling over ourselves trying to get to get you on the air. We we didn't know what to say. It was a first. So no, yeah, um, it actually. I, I don't know if this is a technical issue or not, but the YouTube page where the thing is supposedly supposed to be playing, it's it's not playing. There's yeah, there's a there. it's a whole stupid thing. We should have just gone with the original plan and called this episode 124 and aired it next week, but we we didn't, and so now we're now we're paying for it with confusion. But hey, I love that we have established a brand where that just doesn't matter. Like That's we fucked up. Yeah, what well, the shocking. <laughs> well, isn't that more for Bou? Aren't we supposed to at least like? pretend here? We are pretending and we are attempting. That's the brand. Uh, yeah, official pretenders. Official That's the pretenders. Profession. Professional pretenders. Now let's so, start a band. Dave we could call ourselves that. Yeah, as soon as I came in, he was gone. So, Garrett, oh. with your flashy background there, I see the big umbrella, light umbrellas and stuff. I Is know, this an right? appropriate entree to talk about the uh, Nuts and Bolts series that, that uh, you're doing with us? Absolutely. So uh, let's I talk about your nuts. I let's talk about my nuts and my bolts. Um, yeah, I mean, Wait, you have more than one bolt. I have, I have, I have. Well, you know, you can charge you money watch, for that. Did you ever watch Babylon Five and hear about the uh, what are they called? The uh, oh, never mind. It's going too far. Um, but uh, but yeah. So nuts and bolts is basically an idea that I had a while ago that I brought to Sean and he essentially was like that sounds awesome and you sound super enthusiastic about it and is it ever actually going to happen and I said yes no this one will totally happen <laughs> cuz I, I I might have a history of doing things but no it's um it's basically a uh, well I mean what I what, the the genius of the idea was that the genus not the genius nobody's claiming anything 
genius is that um, especially I mean, what. Yeah, right. definitely. Now, before you get down to the genus, you got to start with the kingdom, the phylum, the order, class, family, genus. <laughs> uh, I don't know. One guy I, out there I just thought that was funny. Yeah, people. exactly. <laughs> One biologist out there is like, this is a show for me! Fap, fap, fap. But uh, but there's this you know there's this podcast there's Joanna's podcast there's uh, the Rocking Self Publishing podcast there's a lot of podcasts that um, are about how to like market your book and sales strategies and all that stuff and and that's awesome that's like super super needed um, but what I struggled with and I know a lot of other authors uh, struggle with is that there's no single resource that's like agreed upon to be one of the best resources for like the simple stuff like how do you format an ebook? How do you how do you actually upload to Kindle? Like the number of times that I've had to explain the Kindle dashboard to people and explain how'd you get your font all big and orange? That looks great. I'm like, yeah, well, it's this, and you do the thing, and there's some HTML and everything like that. Um, but a lot of that like basic, simple like video tutorial type stuff that you'd normally see on a site like Lynda.com didn't exist. So I was like, I can make video tutorials, and they can go yeah. along with everybody. Yeah, it was it was kind of awesome. Uh, I think earlier this year, uh, Garrett started. Um, I would ask him a question. Hey, dude, how do I do this? And instead of answering me an email, he would just send me a video. And he's like, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I'll just make you a video. And then he would make a video, and it was so awesome because, like, in an email like that, if it's really technical, you read that email like five or six times. You know, one sentence you have to read like eight times because it just doesn't quite make sense. And it's just because it, you're really talking about something that is highly visual and you're taking the visual away from it. And Garrett was smart enough to see that. And so he would answer questions for me um, with video and then he just put them up to his, his site and they got traffic because people want to know this stuff. And so once he, I think, decided, you know, these videos are needed, it was a matter of not how do we do them, but how do we get the highest quality version of this idea out there? Yeah, and then also how do we, how do we, int I mean, it seems like something that would go so well with, with everything that Sterling and Stone is doing now, particularly SPP, um, that it just, it just seemed like sort of a natural pairing, and also because, like, you guys don't want to do an episode on how to format for Kindle. Especially. Oh, no, I hate the idea, yeah. but I love, I, I love the idea. I just don't want any part of it, right? Right, it's, exactly. And, and it doing it in podcast form, yeah, doing it in podcast form is just as bad as a text tutorial. Like, even text tutorials on It would be worse because be you'd have to rewind and, like, yeah. it's, a, it's a different kind of learning. What you're, what you're talking about doing is, is Perfect. Yeah, forward. and dude, I hate to use this particular example, but it's one that I know was overwhelming to me. Is um, Garrett, you you did a text tutorial that was like super helpful, but it just made my mind go bleh in right. terms of how to format your Scrivener file. And I think that if you had put that in a video for yeah. me anyway, the way that I learn, I think that that would have been a different level. Like it, it made me go, ah, f mine's good enough. Like Garrett's is better, but I just I can't get my head around it. So and, um, and the other yeah. thing too is that is that we, w the way that we're doing it is it's going to be very very broken down. The v length of the videos is going to vary somewhat between like you know five minutes to like some tutorials are just going to need to be like twelve minutes long and that's that's just the way it is. But on the formatting the book specifically, in order to like like basically I changed the way that I did that and so I had to go back through and I had to reread the whole tutorial and find out what I changed and how to alter it and da 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 whereas in the video series we're gonna be able to like if we change one part of the production we can just take that video which will be stored on its own little hard drive on my desk change that video and re-upload it in its place and link it in the series in the YouTube playlist along with everything else so that new people coming in will just always get the latest and greatest and we're not going to be like yeah we'll lose all of the videos that the, all of the views that that video already accumulated but that's not that's not what it's about. It's we're not doing it for resource. views. Right. right. It's, it's, it's having a, a resource. It's an evergreen resource because yeah. you know um, and it's it's pretty cool because uh, like right now we're we're finishing up um, the fiction unboxed uh, book, the actual book part. By the way, Johnny, I started editing that today. High five. Oh, did you? How far did you get into it? I mean, not oh, I, just percentage wise, because it's gonna bore everybody. But. Oh, not 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 far. Okay. I, I didn't spend that long on it, <laughs> but I got past the 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 really cool intro for sure. Yeah, cool. Um, 
And um, it, it's really, really cool. So Fiction Unbox has a whole video companion to it, right? It has this, this whole um, component piece where you can watch 24 hours of video and see all of this happen. Uh, right Published for Pete has a video companion now. It's all the stuff that we talked about, and Garrett's going to put those in videos, but it's it's going to be a free resource, and that's really, really cool. I feel like we're doing something tremendous for the indie community with this, and I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. So these yeah. are all just, these are all free YouTube videos, right? Yep. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're all going to be up. They're going to be their own playlist on the channel, and the thing that I'm also really, really excited about is I think... I think that it's going to bring the self-publishing uh, instructional community together like a little bit more because like you guys will mention Joanna and she'll mention you guys on her show and uh, and you'll like guest star and everything like that. But all of the stuff from the whole video series is going to be like there are certain things that she talks about that you don't and there are certain things that you talk about that she doesn't. It's going to draw from everything because I'm I'm an audience member to all of it. So we're going to like refer to chapters from Joanna's podcast. So it's going to be a resource for her because you know she gets the same emails we all get. It's like, how do you do thing in Scrivener? And you're like, I'm so not going to explain it to you. Go check out the video. Like we want it to be a resource for uh, Gwen Hernandez to send people to. I've actually already like been sending her like questions on stuff on specifics in the video and everything. So it's going to kind of unify all of that stuff a lot more as well. And and hopefully just be really really awesome for authors. I know that if I, I like I wish it existed when I started out. So, uh, Garrett, are we still firm on the the launch date? Can I talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, so this is going to debut um, on September fifteenth, uh, which is right after the summit. So when we get back, there will be um, and and I think Monday is the day we're talking about. Every Monday there will be a new video in the series. Um, so Garrett has an introduction already written where he he te tells you the same stuff that he's telling you now. Uh, and that'll post on Sterling and Stone, and it'll just be the the introduction to the series. And then we'll, we'll post something new every single week. And as the <clears throat> what's cool, too, and he kind of already alluded to this, but as indie publishing grows, we'll be able to insert new videos into the series. If, if right. we see that something is needed, uh, there's no reason not to make an extra video and, and, and include it. If... if if we're missing holes, because Garrett's had me, you know, look over the outline, and he said, "Do you see any holes in here?" And there were a couple, but it was very thorough. Um, and but that doesn't mean like <clears throat> I'm not necessarily the viewer of these. Um, there are some stuff that just seems common sense to me that I wouldn't even think is needed, right. but that really is. And it's it's a really cool thing when the community can tell us what's needed. Um, so I think that we'll we'll just stay on top of it, and if we see a cry for a certain video, there's no reason not to include it, and that's that's really exciting because it's an evergreen. Uh, these these are evergreen tools that we're creating for the entire community, and um, and a lot of it's modeled off of the way that Lynda.com does. It, it, by the way, if anybody doesn't know Lynda.com, it's Lynda with a Y. And they are like how to use programs. They train you how to use software. They have how to use Scrivener, but it's like the technical side as opposed to... That's my one thing with Linda is that they're like, here's how you do this in this program. And you're like, that's awesome. Why the fuck would I do that? Like, I, you don't know what you're trying to achieve, so, you, so the technical know-how isn't that helpful, and we're going to be trying to tackle that. But what they'll do is they have their... Um, you know, they're, uh, for video editing, the, like, program I use is Premiere Pro. So they have their Premiere Pro tutorial series, and then they have a sub-series, which is, like, color correction in Premiere Pro so that you make your videos look all special. So we'll have, like, Video 8, which is how to export for a, a, a Mobi file uh, in Kindle. So and then we'll have, like, Video 8B, which is how to embed fonts in your Kindle, a Mobi file uh, from Scrivener, that kind of thing. So how I'm just trying to think of this from an audience uh, audience perspective, and it's like this is a pretty cool announcement. But since we're not like showing the videos here, it's kind of a tease. Like, awesome, there oh, are videos coming, and and yay, and <laughs> and so we could keep we could keep talking about the fact that there are videos coming. But um, I'm wondering what the takeaway here is for for, for somebody listening to this as opposed, you know, like what 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 can we what can we teach them to, 
adopt today. Well, Ivan, uh, I mean, what we can, uh, I mean, what we can teach them today. I mean, like we said on a podcast, like I don't know about I- instructing them specifically, but what would be really helpful from the SPP community is if you jump in the comments on this video, I can monitor it, and maybe we can um, have uh, have Jacob monitor it as well. I don't know if that's something that he can do, but like, what are the things you're most concerned about learning? Obviously. We'll probably already have some of them in mind, but I would, you know, if if we get together all the comments and somebody's like, "Oh crap, yeah, let's do," you know, like we we would love to get new ideas to flesh out the whole series so that we are doing what people want as we go through it. I mean, I know, I know, we only all know what's been most helpful to us. Like for me, learning how to format, you know, was huge, and like getting all like intricate and stuff like that. So obviously, I have a lot of attention on that. But, you know, if people want to jump in and say what they need. Yeah, I think I think even if you think you know stuff, it's worth paying attention to anyway. So yeah. I don't think I'm going to learn anything that's, you know, totally, totally brand new to me. But if the longest video was 12 minutes, like I've got 12 minutes. And I actually watch a lot of Linda videos. I, I, uh, I re-upped my subscription very recently. And, you know, uh, before I started doing the keynote presentations, like I did a bunch of keynote tutorials, for example. And Garrett's right. They're a bit dry. They're a bit technical. Um, but but it doesn't matter. I feel like the... I feel not like <clears throat> Not all of them, but but a high percentage of the ones. I've even done some on, on color because I'm trying to learn more about design work and fonts and things like that. And, um, and, and the one I watched recently was color and... She had a the, the 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 instructor was very warm and very friendly, but the information is delivered. It's a little it's a little dry. I mean, Garrett has personality, so I'm sure they'll. But I think that's that's a Linda thing too. They probably have, you know, um, standards and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas I'm like, um, here's how we're gonna format a Kindle book, motherfuckers. <laughs> so, um, uh, um. Uh, I'm sorry. I keep paying attention to chat, and every time I do, it just derails my thinking. <laughs> so anyway, um, what I uh, put into the chat was, please basically restrict those suggestions to the YouTube videos. Yeah, and the, the, the worst reason... thing you could do for productivity is to start emailing them to us. Yeah, and the the other reason too is that if you if you put them in the comments, we can pay attention there, and then when that video is live. We can we can respond to your comment with the link to the video, so that will be more helpful to you, and it will be more helpful to us. So please, oh, that's a great idea. Put them in the comment. So anyway, um, I, I love Linda. Linda's fantastic, and um, it, it's th- it's a great source for tutorials. And I've been looking at them a lot. And even if there's something that I already know or I feel that it's too technical, um, I really love watching it because yeah. I feel like I'm going to pick up if I just pick up something. Even if it's not something that is new information, but it somehow twists old information and makes me look at it in a new way. I mean, look, guys, we are we are trying to make money off of our art, right? So the the sharper we make our tools, you know, the better our craftsmanship. And um, this is this yeah, is a very good example of it. <laughs> you know, these these videos are just a way for a few minutes each week to look at something that you are already doing because it's part of your business, whether that's compiling an ebook or embedding a font. These are things that you want to know. Even if you're not the one doing the compiling and you're hiring somebody to do that, you should be able to speak the basic language so that you know what you're asking for and you know whether they're doing a competent job and you know whether you're getting ripped off. Right. So. And I we're going to try to teach, for example, that, that, uh, one in particular on that one is we're going to do a video on book cover design. We're not going to try and teach you how to design a book cover because, like, that's Photoshop and that's graphic design and that's art training and yada, yada, yada. We're going to teach you some of the general principles that you should be looking for when you're getting a book cover design done. Now, if you, if some people, I know there's a percentage of those people who's going to watch that video and be like, oh, Give me Photoshop. I can do this with these principles, and it might work and it might not. But when you're going to 99designs.com and getting slash a book SPP. cover design done, right? Yeah, the slash <laughs> SPP. Um, you should know. Slash you SPRT. Should, you, <laughs> you should. Uh, I'm not SPRT. Don't, don't use that link. Use but, SPP. Uh, STP, um, sorry. I get them all confused. Uh, <laughs> But you should. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, you should know. What do the Stone looking... Temple Pilots have to do with 99? 
<laughs> Storytelling podcast, Sean. Come on now. Oh. Um, yeah, that was a bad acronym choice. I will just own up to that right now. We should not have gone with STP. But, um, but yeah, so you, you should know when you get your submissions from designers, which, like, you should have some objective measurement of which ones are good. And when you're working with the designers and trying to, like, fine-tune your book cover and whatnot, you should know what, you should know if your font is too small or if they, if they used papyrus. Like, we're going to have a big <laughs> section of the video that's just like, do not use papyrus. Do not use Comic Sans. Do not, you, you know, like, do not do all of these stupid, stupid things that people do over and over again. So that's going to be our focus is not, like, this is not this is not going to teach you, you know, we're not going to teach you how to design like web design, but we're going to teach you the elements that should be in your website. If you already know web design, you will know how to put those elements in yourself. If you are hiring somebody else to do your author website, then you will know what to tell them to put on. I need to have this. I need to have this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I like the idea of the video series uh, and I liked your Scrivener tutorials uh, that you had done too. Uh, because even though I knew how to use Scrivener for my own stuff, I don't. Basically, when I learn something, I learn what I need to know, and I don't really go beyond it. So, but but you you had learned different things, and I saw how you did things a little bit differently, and I thought those were some cool ideas. And I think that's a cool thing about uh, video series like this is even if you know something, even if you know how to do book cover, even if you know how to use Scrivener or something, seeing somebody else do it gives you other ideas for things that you might not know that you don't know and things that you can do. Right, exactly. Which is just, I mean, it's the same way that, that, that anybody with, with any educa educational resource, including the, the uh, podcast itself, it's like we, you know, everybody's already out there doing something, but they, it, it is help. It's like a, it's like its own little sort of mini mastermind. I mean, it's not exactly a mastermind to the degree that the podcast is, but it's like it's something that seeing so, the way somebody else does it can be helpful. And I mean, you can you can do that with you can do that with a lot of existing resources out there. But the 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 point is that it's bringing it all together in a unified thing. Like this is this is a back to front education on the entire process from. How do I write my book in Scrivener, which will be covered more extensively? Sean, do we already have Scrivener Beats videos live? <laughs> the only thing we have live so far is um, the uh, the one we did I don't know, months ago um, that was a teaser for the series to come. And then today, um, I'm actually exporting it right now. Um, I finally finished the first one. Nice. Um, so we could get. You know what? That would be kind of cool just to get. I mean, it's not related to nuts and bolts, but it's it's. It's something I feel like um, we we did a lot of talking about teasing. Um, what do we have that we could share with people now? Is there anything? Um, could you make like a playlist of stuff you've already done? Something like that. Uh, I'll I'll put together a playlist on my YouTube channel, uh, which is the Garrett Robinson with my existing tutorials. Um, that'll be helpful. Uh, but also they should check out. Uh, I don't know. We could try to put uh, now. That th that's probably the best resource we can give them uh, right at this exact moment in time. I just had a thought. I hate that. I was like, oh, we should send them to. This Damn is it. right around the corner, though, you guys. This is um, what the fifteenth. So it's yeah, it, it's it's ten days away, um, and it will be really really awesome. Again, you have to wait, you know, week to week as new ones are released. But 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 this should be a fantastic resource that kind of helps you. Um, it reminds you, I think, not just the little tutorials, but it kind of reminds you of what's important. It reminds you of what you're doing. And I mean, for me personally, when I see stuff like that and I'm learning, even if I'm learning in you know, tiny nuggets, it, 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 it focuses me. It makes me feel closer to my work. It makes me want to do better. Um, it you know, sparks my interest and my drive. And I think that you know, checking in with one of these videos each week is just a, a really smart idea. Yeah, and it's going to, I mean, it, I know you said that it's, that it's different, but it is going to be integrated with um, Scrivener Beats, which we should be uh, having up uh, pretty shortly, right? Some of the videos? Yeah, my, my goal is to have every single one done by, I mean, every single one. There's not that many of them, right. but it, it just, it feels like a huge undertaking right now because the first one was so painful. Yeah. Um, but I think they'll be a lot, a lot easier now. But my goal is to have them all totally wrapped by Friday and off to you for post-production. But you'll have one today, so we can start toying with that for sure. 
Yeah, exactly. We should put together we should put together uh, something that we can share with everybody, like either by the end of the day or tomorrow, so that uh, so people can have something uh, to start off with. But it's all but it's all going to be you know an integrated thing that people can can follow along with. I had this grand idea of making the entire series like all at once and then just releasing it. You know, like here's the entire thing, and Sean was like, "Awesome!" So that'll take you five years, and you probably won't finish it. So how about we just start producing them? <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the 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 quality of the the videos? Because I mean, if you're if people are looking at the existing videos, these are definitely an elevation of that. I think Linda was a big inspiration here in the yeah. quality that we wanted to deliver, and we've got new tools for these. Um, you know, they are they are something grander than what you you. Hearing all of us talk, you might be expecting just some very simple YouTube videos, the kind that are everywhere. But these really are, these are the kind of thing um, we absolutely could charge for this, and we absolutely are not charging for it. Right. Um, but just because it's free, that isn't in any way a reflection of the, the quality or the work that's going into it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna have the uh, the self publishing podcast. I don't know what do you call it feel or uh, ethos, ethos. Yeah, exactly. Where um, you're gonna have it's gonna be it's gonna ha it's not gonna be it's not gonna be dry. It's gonna be all right. Here's how we do this and why we do this. That's the most important thing. The why is like so important. So really. yeah. I I feel like a lot of people know. Um, a lot of things to do without knowing, you know, like knowing knowing that you should make your first book free in a series, but not knowing why might mean that you make your first book in a series free, but you don't have a CTA in the back of your book. You know what I mean? Right, like, and that's, don't get the that's second what book. I mean. That's what I was trying. I don't think I did a, a good job articulating that earlier about, you know, watching things like this. They just remind us what's important. They remind us what to do. Even if we're not exactly learning a brand new piece of information, even if we're being reminded of something or relearning it, it, I think there's a lot of purpose to that. Right, exactly. Um, but uh, but then also uh, we have, as you can see, all of this nice new uh, e equipment, um, some good lights and whatever. I've been tweaking my office again and again. Anybody who's been watching my vlogs has seen like that the picture looks different every time, and that's because I'm trying to find the best way to shoot and light and everything. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, with professional screen captures that will actually show, like, right down to, like, key commands and strokes and everything. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to take, um, a, I mean, we'll probably end up taking multiple books because it's going to go over the uh, length of time of the series. But we're going to take specific examples of, like, here's a book and here's what we did. So just like when you're listening to SPP and we're talking about how you guys are marketing the Dream Engine or the Beam or something like that, um, it's going to be on a book that I'm formatting for you guys or that I'm, you know, about to publish or that we're, you know, doing something on um, so that you'll actually get to see, again, not only how it's done but, like, why it's done and how it works into the um, overall strategy. And those tangible examples, I think, are just, they're, they're so important and they're, they're often missing because a lot of times when you see tutorials... Um, you know, they're not really part of a larger web. And if you've been listening to the show for any length of time, like you kind of have a, a bird's eye view of, of the many things that we're doing and seeing just the, the nuts and bolts. Like it is aptly named. Seeing the nuts and bolts of all of that, um, I think it helps helps you to see globally what we're doing, but also the, 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 the minutia of it and, and why all of that matters and how knowing about the little things can help you really, really accomplish the big things. I just, I just need to point out that Sean's shirt, I love it. I just noticed it just now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this says, is for, for you listeners, it says blah 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 blah. Did your yeah, wife get that for you? <laughs> uh, no, we we I was on we were on a date and I bought it while we were on the date. Oh. And um, it it's my family's favorite shirt. You and your wife, I or you and Johnny were on a date. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Me um, and my wife. Okay. It's the the other thing too is like it's going to go into it's going to go into detail. Here's like one one just one small sample detail that like a crap ton of people don't know about Scrivener. Um, in Scrivener, when you're formatting uh, and you go to your specifically your formatting window, uh, you know this is like the perils of audio. It's kind of hard to um, hear it in the words. But when you go to the when you go to the compile window and there's the formatting tab, you've got your folder. 
and you've got your two different text documents. Well, most people know about that and know that you can format folders differently uh, than your text files. But they don't realize, they don't know the actual mechanics of how you can create different sublevels that have different formatting rules. So, for example, yeah, you those sublevels to... confuse the fuck out yeah, of me. Right. Oh my god, you should see the fiction unboxed <laughs> folders. There, I opened it the today, and I was like, oh, my head hurts. Dude, it's just the same as write, publish, repeat. And and thank God to Scrivener. I know Garrett. I'm interrupting Garrett in the middle of a point here. But the way Scrivener Sorry. used to be is it would say folder level two plus. And you're like, what the fuck does that mean? And, <laughs> and they added something a few releases ago, or maybe the last release, where if you're if you are on that level in the formatting pane, it highlights what the fuck yeah. they're talking about on the left. So thank God because before it was like, well, is it two? Is it? I don't know what that means. Right. Yeah. So right. Publish get, repeats are, are confusing too. There's just there's so many. There, it's a lot to manage. So you can you can add uh, if you just click on like the default text icon and whatever. Right now, all of your chapters, if you have your chapters as text files, all of those will will highlight showing that those are you know those are what you're affecting the formatting of right now. But if you uh, if you add another level once you've clicked on that then those will all remain highlighted and you're like, what the fuck, did I even just change anything? But that's because your text files are in the folder of your document. And if you add another level past that, then that is things that are in subfolders within the document. So the way that you can use that is you can create a back matter folder on the same level as all of your chapters and then put your back matter files in that folder and then your back, like we've got all of our books mostly have crazy awesome chapter headings that are either image based or they have a specialized font or anything, something like that. So you can set that for your chapters, but then if you create a folder with your back matter files in that, they will have different formatting. They will not have the crazy font that's no longer applicable because nobody's like, this isn't the book. This is very simple and matter of fact and a CTA and like, go get the next book. So um, that's just like one thing that will explain, you know, it, obviously it's going to be uh, slightly more applicable uh, or easy easy to follow when you're watching it on video, but that's like one thing that nobody I've ever met, except for Gwen Hernandez, of course, understands that. Like they don't get that whole pain. So we're going to be going pain by pain through the thing, showing how to actually uh, do your book. Another thing that most people don't understand is if you format one ebook that only refers to uh, to links on your site, like we use book pages on our website, right? You, we don't send people to go buy the Beam Season Two on Amazon. We send them to get no, it. No, we yeah, we've moved away from that. For, 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 right for clarity, not anymore. We did right, exactly. But if you if you set that up with book pages on your website, you can export a single EPUB file that will go everywhere uh, because uh, Kindle now accepts. EPUB files, and they'll oh, format I didn't know it. that. Yeah. I didn't know that either. either. Does so, it screw up the formatting? Screw, it, it does not touch the formatting. I mean, I, I've never, l let me just say, I have never encountered a scenario. Oh, where that is formatting. so convenient. <laughs> Massive. Yeah, that's, that's a big deal, because we used to create four or five different versions of, of a compiled yes. file. And so the we're down to one? Yeah. The permutations on that are ridiculous because you're like, did I use the Kobo back matter with the right volume oh, file I feel cover? So with happy it? Oh my right god! Now, so <laughs> now I, I have a question. Have you figured out? Have Have you yet worked on uh, a straight up illustration book? Do you know if you can do that in Scrivener? No. Although, okay, check this because out. I will be making one. <laughs> uh, I have not done that in Scrivener, um, but uh, the, the I I also want to clarify that this whole tutorial series is not going to be about Scrivener and um, I am working on this is going to have to be one of those sub videos we talked about that we add afterwards because mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't fit with the main thrust of what most people seem to need but um, I am experimenting now with ebook uh, design in the program InDesign so I'm okay. sending books uh, InDesign is what I use for print paper uh, for, uh, for print books and that's what people will learn how to use and I'm sure some people right off the bat are going to be like, oh, InDesign, crap. You know, I don't want to spend $2,000 on InDesign. Adobe's now got their subscription system. So you can subscribe. Yeah, you can subscribe to InDesign for 20 bucks a month. And if you can't oh, spend... That's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that either. That's fantastic. So you can get it. You can start fucking around with it. It's 
got it's complicated. <laughs> it's yeah, I, complicated. I tried it and I said no, this is not for me. <laughs> but what I found Maybe out when is you that, do your video, I'll figure it out. Yeah, but when what what uh what I found out is that when people are designing these books, like the Dr. Seuss books on Kindle are are uh, a fixed layout. And they're fantastic. You can actually tap the text on each page and it expands so that you can read it more easily. All this cool stuff. People do that in InDesign. InDesign has specific features now for ebook formatting. And that's nowadays. Oh, that's fantastic. It. Yeah. That's really good news. So now you can use it to embed fonts. You can use it to add hyphenation. If you've ever had lines that, like, where you really just want that fucking word to hyphenate in Kindle and you can't, you can do it in InDesign. So we're going to, like, Again, that's going to be advanced, advanced shit. Most people will just take Scrivener, they'll export their ebook, and it'll it'll upload fine. It'll work everywhere. But um, but you know we're going to get into using InDesign. I'm sure some people out there. I'm one of those guys who like if I had heard that on a past episode, I would be like go to go download InDesign and just start screwing around with it. Do it absolutely. And if you get in there and you find out like how do I do this, let us know. That's the exact kind of thing that we want to add tutorials into the series for. That's awesome. fantastic. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, the, the, I mean, I, I, I'm into the whole nuts and bolts things, but there's just been a couple of nuggets in the last five minutes that that make me very happy. I, I, I did not... How long has uh, Amazon taken um, EPUBs? I honestly don't know. <laughs> Of all things, my dad told me about it three months ago because he has a self-published book, and he was like, "Yeah, I uploaded three a new version ago." Yeah, what and the there, hell? is his book called "My Son the Asshole"? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I look for it today on Kindle. <laughs> Raising a child who doesn't shut up. <laughs> I was actually really quiet. Quiet that one. You believe that? I was a super quiet, introspective kid. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> That was before the crack. Hollywood, Hollywood called. <laughs> Hollywood called. Yeah, it does that to everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> I lived here my whole life. I didn't do. I didn't. I don't know. Um, but uh, but yeah. So for about three months, I've just been doing. I've just been doing straight EPUB files, and they work great. And that was uh, awesome. How you waited to be on the show to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, guys, there's so many things that like. What else I, are you keeping to yourself? I don't know. Like that's the thing is that I figure out so many things per day that I'm just like I don't. I, I should I scroll through some of the texts that you sent me that aren't telling me about email? <laughs> <laughs> but you did deem important enough to share. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well. Uh, uh, another thing is that, like, and we have to. This this is a little later in the series, and we have to finalize um, what we think on this. But we're going to go over some best practices for a sales funnel and how you actually set that up. Like, for example, everybody knows make the first book in your series perma free. Um, well, what what I do now is I make the first book in my series perma free, and then people can get the second book. Uh, for free if they review the first one. That gets amazing results. People review out the f fucking wazoo uh, the first book, and I just get like five to eight reviews per day on, on the two books that I've got that set up for. So I that want the but nuts and bolts that shows us how to get fucking books perma-free that won't get perma-free. That's what I want. Yeah, well, that's actually a thing that I want to cover because a lot Wattpad. of people say... Uh, I don't know about Wattpad. Well, here, here's what here's what works for me. Um, I a lot of people are like, oh, you just log into KDP and you send them an email. I've had a dozen people tell me that that you just log into KDP, send them an email, and they do it. Never fucking worked. Never ever ever. I was so pissed off. Here's what did work. I create you 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 go to Bowker or uh you know what you buy ISBNs. You get an ISBN, you assign the same ISBN to your book in Kindle and Barnes and & Noble and Kobo and iBooks, and then you email KDP and you have your list um, report the book as perma-free. Got when that, Jacob? Because when, <laughs> when it's the same <laughs> ISBN, then they're like, oh, no, it really is the same book. I don't know. Like, that's just my conjecture, but, like, I'm thinking that people are literally that saying... That makes a lot of sense. I, 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 do have, I do have one stipulation on your, your free thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is 
it's a very gray area, but I, I think specifically if you are specifically reviews, you can only give something in exchange for a review that is that thing. Like you can only give season one to somebody that's reviewing season one. You can't give them another season. In Remember when you texted me the idea, Garrett? <laughs> It's exactly what I said. They won't I think let we've me actually, do this. I think we've actually had this exact same. Well, I, I, but but I'm going to say, you can, you can specify, though. Say, this is not an exchange for a review on Season 1. This is, you leave me a review, and I will send you a review copy of Season 2 or Book 2 or whatever the hell it is. But I, th I think you need to be very specific because, legally right. speaking, you cannot make any exchange for a review that is not the exact thing that's being reviewed. Per, per the right. terms, you are, per you the are terms giving them a review no, copy that is like demonstrated F yeah, that they are a reviewer. No, yeah, per, per, per the terms and conditions and Amazon and everything. And, no, no, and no, no, I'm not you. talking about fuck Amazon. I'm talking legally law, law stating this. FTC, look it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> because if you give a, if you give a free copy of a, a I want to say Nightcrawler, but that's not the right. I'm so sorry. Nightblade. Are you talking Nightblade about my series? Yeah, Nightblade. Yeah, so if you give if you give Nightblade two away for a review of Nightblade one, the FTC is going to come because they care about Nightblade. You They're know, on no, your no, ass. Okay. <laughs> well, but I can. Uh, but you can give away copies of your own book to whoever you want. I mean. Yeah. No. Oh, here. Okay. Wait. 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 Dave is actually technically right here. Thank here. you. Okay. Dave, Dave, is, Dave is technically right. That is the FTC law. Okay. But. The FTC does. They care about people who are scamming people. That's what they care about. They do not care about Nightblade. Not you know. That's not a dig on Nightblade. <laughs> but if like, you're going to be doing a video and you're telling people what to do, you ought to be within the guidelines of the fucking law. Thank you. So you're gonna that's no, true. no 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 no. That's 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 totally that's true. true. But you're saying you're saying that uh, you're saying that you cannot say review season one and I'll give you season two. You can't do that trade. Really, really. Well, let's see, you this can't. is why we're going to have Dave check all of our scripts before we record any of these. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Okay, so Garrett, he's he's right, and whenever Dave and I have this argument, which is like every other Monday, um, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is this is this is what, what, how I combat this. Mm -hmm. It's just language. You just say, <laughs> no, no, it's just language. It is. You just have to you have to be articulate, and you have to say, I. And Johnny just said it. I'm giving you this because it's a review copy. So if you want a review right. copy of, of episode two, show me that you're a reviewer by sending me a review of episode one. Show because we're only, we're only supplying review copies to people who are reviewers because they're digital and supplies are limited. I don't know. <laughs> right. But yeah, the, totally. I mean, the but, thing is, is that the thing is, is that it has no uh, the, the thing that you're offering them has no monetary value i do remember the law that you're talking about now david and the thing is is that if you bought them a copy of episode 2 off of amazon that's against the law because you're giving them something of monetary value in exchange for the other thing you are actually it's it's actual monetary compensation uh, i don't know I, I think that this is this is minutia. <laughs> I think that we're also Let's not. Get a lawyer, can we do, can we, can we do a nuts and bolts video on uh, this? <laughs> <laughs> because I do think. What that, was that, Hobbs? <laughs> like I our know that I mean, reviews reviews sell books. <laughs> reviews absolutely For sell sure. books. And and for the record, I think that what what Garrett's doing on this is right on. Like I wish that we did it across the board on our stuff. I would gladly trade books for reviews all day long because I feel like the people who are it's they're just qualified reviews too. Not only do you need a number of reviews, but the people who want the next book in the series liked the book they just read. That's a review that you want. And as much right. as you would like to think that your audience loves you enough to just drop reviews whenever, they don't. Yeah. Like if you give them something, they will review a lot more often. You know, uh, uh, Dream Engine. You know, we had a lot of a, a lot of uh, reviews on that. You know, respectively. But even so, when we said, hey. We're going to drop review copies of um, of the audio for people who have actually left a review. Reviews ticked up. Like yeah. when you give someone an incentive, they're just more likely to do it. And I'm just so not worried about that particular law because I think sometimes you just really have to pay attention to the spirit and not the letter. And the FTC worries about people getting hornswoggled. No one is trying to right. hornswoggle anyone here, which is why it makes sense to do what is best for your business and not. And that being said, you you know we are not lawyers, so like don't. Right. Swear. 
But um, just don't let fear control you to where it's stifling your business. Yeah, and the other thing, uh, so uh, the the, the uh, other thing on that funnel thing, which got me started on on uh, on that whole deal, is uh, is the whole pay with a tweet thing. I mean, you guys have talked about pay with a tweet on the thing before. I don't know how much you utilize it or not. But uh, but pay, paying with a tweet is another great step for readers. Like if your first if your first episode is free, ask them to tweet it, uh, or or share it on Facebook or whatever. Um, that's another thing that you can that you can basically just you know they share the link and they and they get something as your reader, maybe a special short story or something like that. But like how to design a sales funnel like that and explaining we're not going to go in depth as an SPP episode about what a marketing funnel is but we're going to give the basics and then we're going to say okay here's how you actually build one in the real world you set this up you've got this link in the back of your book in the CTA and da 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 da, da. we're going to have a whole video about how to construct CTAs and what the first CTA in your book should be and you know that answer is actually very different for different people. Like on the on the show, uh, you guys talk about your first uh, your first CTA is always um, to uh, to get people uh, to the website and sign up for uh, for the list. Well, if you've got a first free book in your series, I would argue that it's more important that your first CTA is for the next book in the series. Because if you're you're not putting out a free book just to give away free books to everybody, and if somebody gets a free book and reads it, it's probably a pretty small book, and they're probably not ready to become a stoner. Or yeah, dude, whatever. I always agree with that. I think the first CTA should be for the next book too. Right, exactly. Although if somebody has just bought the Beam season one, you can probably get them in the door to do your thing. So it's like, but we'll by the same you. token, the most logical thing is Beam season two, I think. Right. Well, you just give them a cookie. So you say, if you you could get the Beam season two, you know, at any online retailer, or you could get it at Sterling and Stone, and it comes with something else, like right. it's Beam season two, right. and you, you can't also discount get... it. I feel like yeah. we're going off a little topic, but you can't say the Beam season two is nine ninety nine on Amazon. You can't say we'll give it to you for seven ninety nine. Can't do that, but you can. No, because they'll price match. But you right. could say it's, it's no, still nine ninety nine. But, but you, you get can. the runner and and sweep. Right. You can do discount codes. You can do discount codes. Just as a quick note, whether you're like because Kobo will just like get, Kobo's given you guys and they've given me discount codes in the past. They're they're completely allowed to do that as their own digital. Except that Amazon won't give you discount codes. No, Amazon no, wait, won't. He's saying the other can. way. He's saying right. it's so so the Beam season two would be nine ninety nine, but if you get it from our site, it works with a coupon code, so you could get it for seven ninety nine. But no, if you come to code. our site and sign up, you get season two with a discount code. So it's like all these intricacies, all these like different types. The things there's a million different ways to do it, and we get to explore all of them. I'm very excited about this series. I get quite passionate. I, I, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna. I'm looking forward to the series that is um, Garrett's nuts and bolts versus Dave. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know, a lot of these dates could be like I legally, I suppose, but you know, we got we got to work this out. So. Fun times. Fun times. <laughs> That'll be a BOU episode. So I think we should finish, guys. All right. um, is there any final stuff? What's the um, what's the final CTA on um, the, the the video series? Well, thing? you should subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Or if you're Stone. listening on the audio, go to the Sterling and Stone channel. The Sterling and Stone YouTube channel. What about you? Uh, what about you, Garrett? What What do you want to tell people about? People should go read Nightblade. The first episode is free, and it's kind of awesome. And if and you review it, you get the second one. Right, right. <laughs> review don't copy of the second the one, a review copy. <laughs> I said don't tell the FCC. FTC, don't tell them either. <laughs> um, all right, so I guess, I guess at that I guess at that point we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be done, right? So um, everyone, thanks for listening to the Self-Publishing Podcast. If you'd like to get our best, advi best advice without all the off-topic bullshit, be sure to pick up our book. Write, publish, repeat the no look required guide to self publishing success at selfpublishingpodcast.com slash WPR. And if you've ever wanted to see how a novel really gets written from start to finish with nothing held back, uh, Sean and I wrote one at fictionunboxed.com and you can see everything there. Thanks everybody so much for listening and we'll see you next week.